what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're going to talk about process injection and process hollowing uh, i'm sure guys you have heard about these subjects before but we haven't touched on these uh, subjects on my channel so today is going to be the first time i talk about these subjects first let's talk about process injection so here we're the red line we're going first to define what is process injection so it is a commonly uh, talked about subject among the red teamers, penetration testers, and even hackers. Process injection is a method of inserting a malicious code into a legitimate process. So basically, how this happens? The first thing in process injection is you have to uh, obtain access to the machine. So the first thing we have is machine compromise you need to have compromise a machine okay the next step you're going to do you're going to list the running processes in windows you can use task list in linux you can use ps a u x e f to list the current running processes okay fine so what do i do next the next thing we want to choose a process okay so how do we choose a process to inject we're going to pick up the pid of this process okay now what is the ideal method of choosing a process the process preferably uh preferably uh, should be running as the user you are so when you first compromise the machine you can run id or who am i right so learning what is the user you have got access to now when you choose a process choose a process that has the current user okay the output of the command who am i and preferably it is a system process if you could do that or if you find a process under these conditions preferably do it why because when you choose a process under the current user you have got access to you ensure that you have all the access rights which is a very important condition in process injection you have all the access rights to the process you are you are you wish to inject and that's the first method. that's the first reason the other reason why we choose system process because we want to hide the malicious code in a legitimate process without uh, attracting attention so when you run task manager if you see the windows processes you're not going to get suspicious everything will look normal but if you see a process named uh, such as evil.exe, you're going to say, oh, what, oh, what is this? What is evil.exe? I mean, what kind of process is this? I didn't sign up for this. So you're going to attract attention if you choose the wrong process. So we choose a process. Okay. The next thing, next thing here, we want to allocate memory. So we want to allocate memory, but for what? for the shell code and here comes the term injection because the process we choose we're going to inject it with the shell code now you might be asking how do i create the shell code now creating the shell code itself is not a tiresome process you can use msf venom you can um find one online online like depending on the os linux or windows you can find a shell code online copy it and paste it in the code so here we allocate memory for the shell code to allocate memory for the shell code we need to uh, find out the uh, size okay size of the shell code in order to allocate the proper uh, bytes for it now the fifth step here after we allocate memory, we're going to write the shell code. So we write the shell code to the allocated memory. 
6 after the shellcode is written to the allocated memory we need to the last thing is execute oops so we execute the shellcode now when the shellcode is executed you have successfully injected a legitimate process and now your shellcode is running now why do we do all of this we do all of this for various reasons first we want to maintain persistence so see here we achieved we have got access to the machine after exploiting some vulnerability if you want to obtain persistence you will want to think about process injection consider process injection as a method to achieve persistence and we want to be as much stealth, stealth as possible so being stealthy here is important by hiding the malicious code inside a legitimate process you achieve stealthiness and it's the there is still chances you will be detected but they are low now how all of this happens it happens through the api calls through every step in the process injection we actually use windows api calls so windows api calls are calls uh, to communicate with the underlying you know os and hardware so basically for example, when you choose a process, we do that in the code. We use an API call named as open process. This is API call. Another example, when we allocate memory to the byte size of the shell code, we want to use an API call for allocating memory. The API call for that is virtual allocate that's the api call now we use these in the code we use c language mainly so we create the process injector in c language so every step of the process we use in those api calls to achieve or to complete the task and here if you want to write the shell code you can use write process memory this is another another Windows API call. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to take a look at the sample code here. Let's see. So, binary exploitation. And this is process hollowing. Let's take a look at this. This is a sample C code. Okay. Uh, the credit goes to try hack me, of course. Now, here, as you can see, guy, we define shellcode variable that will hold the shellcode here you paste your all your shellcode either through by grabbing it online or by using msfn and then here as you can see we use open process api call because we want to choose a process from the already running processes now this is done through the it's taken as a command line argument so you supply the pid of the process in the command line to the executable after you compile the code as you can see we use virtual allocate to locate the size for you know the shell code here the process running and here write process memory another api call to write the uh, shell code with allocated memory size and lastly we execute the shell code through create remote thread okay let's circle back to the board and talk about the next thing in line is process hollowing so in process hollowing the the the, the 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 whole thing is not that much different but the steps could uh, they are similar but they're not the same so the first step in process hollowing is we don't choose a process we actually create create a target process but the catch is the process is in suspended state we don't run the process so what happens here we choose an executable file that is legitimate in the windows operating system such as internet explorer okay or it could be explorer anything that 
doesn't attract attention so we start this start the process in suspended state from one of the windows legitimate uh, processes next thing we want to choose a malicious image now the thing here a malicious image is an already compiled binary that you will use as your own malware so this is a combined rootkit could be rootkit now next remember that the process has been launched okay and tied to a legitimate executable what we want to do we want to do what is called as unmap we want to unmap the legitimate process here or legitimate code from memory because we don't want this to load we want this to load at the very beginning in a suspended state but later on we want to load the malicious image so we need to unmap the legitimate code from the memory now we circle back here after the memory is free we want to allocate now memory for what memory for the for the malicious code for the rootkit let's say and five we set an entry point by actually figuring out what is the base address so here we go into details uh, on the registers and how to extract the base address because we want to set the entry point of the uh, rootkit <laughs> and the last step what we want to do after everything is done and after we allocate the memory set the entry point wrote the rootkit into the allocated memory in the process we want now to turn this from suspended into active now the legitimate process that was first running as internet explorer is now running our rootkit the same thing here guys um, with process injection applies at process hello we need to use windows api calls in our code to be able to do that <coughs> another example process hollowing so this is process hollowing code again the credit goes to try hack me and here we the thing is here we execute the, after we compile the code we don't need to provide a process pid like in process injection right because we already have the process in mind so here we choose the victim image the victim image is the legitimate process that will run initially in a suspended state here we choose for example internet explorer the replacement image it is the rootkit or the malware or the shell code you want to execute it should be in executable format that's the thing that will run instead of the uh, legitimate image here create process a it's an api call used to create processes and we create in a suspended state as you can see we we performed the api call and we use the victim image as the uh, binary process because we don't want to attract attention first and then we perform a series of memory allocations and setting in the entry setting the uh, base address for example here you can see guys we have the edge replacement we actually first test the rootkit and then make sure it is running and after that if we scroll down we start to memory allocation using the virtual allocate api call we unmap the executable image from the victim process remember that we need to uh, disconnect the legitimate process from the, uh, uh, the, the legitimate binary we want to attach the rootkit instead so to do that again we use windows api calls and here we allocate memory for the replacement image 
another important step in the code is when we write uh, the new root key to the process we use write process memory api call and we attach the necessary parameters such as the process the image and the base address okay so let's see now how this can be achieved in a live fashion so remember that this is part of abusing windows internals room and here we're going to split the view and start answering the questions so we're going to do task two and task three task four is uh, very easy guys but it, it's just instead of abusing the process we abuse the threads so I'm going to do task two and task three for this video and later on we're going to complete the rest of the tasks okay so we have a file here injectors in the injector we will find all the information we need so we have the shell code injector and we have the hollowing injector and we have the source. The source will contain the source code of these uh, binaries. And this is the source code we have gone through while, you know, explaining the critical parts of the code. Injector and so uh, sh shell code injector. So first, we want to demonstrate an example of process injection. Okay. The first thing we run the task manager. And we take a look at the running processes. So we go to details. And the, the, the very first important thing is to choose a process whose username is THM attacker because this is the username that we have got access to. As you can see, we have a couple of processes. We have the freedom to choose whatever we want. Now, I mentioned first that it's preferable if you choose a system process. So we can try this as well. Let's try the see your THM attacker, smart screen, task host. We have various processes to inject. Let's try with CTF monitor. The PID is 1136. 1, so we're going to first start the command line. Or the command prompt okay now for mobile users we're going to make this font bigger so they don't complain that the font is small okay so CD injectors shellcode injector and we supply the process PID 1136 now what's gonna happen in a real scenario the shellcode that you chose in your code will get executed but here we're going to obtain the challenge flag so here we have a flag to obtain scrolling down what flag is obtained after injecting the shellcode so we're going to inject the shellcode here let's try Let's see. Now nothing appeared, apparently because the injection wasn't successful. So if that happens with you, you can choose a different process. Let's choose now Explorer. 3,176. See, and now it it worked. So this is the flag. So now the process injection work successfully all right so now let's try with process hollowing so the process hollowing works similar and instead we don't choose a process we actually run the hollower itself because the hollower will create a process in the suspended state as you will see so hollowing if you execute as you can see we have the flag ready but let's go through the output as you can see first a process has been created with the PID 3872. Now, if you take a look now at the processes, you're not going to find this PID. Why? Because what happened, the hollowing just 
occurred and the shell code has been executed and finished now if you if you, if you noticed earlier the flag now ap appeared and this and then it the application closed so naturally the process will close down after that that's why you cannot find it additionally this is the this is a PID of a process that runs first uh, in a suspended state. So first we create a process. Okay, now we get information about the replacement executable, which is the rootkit, the size, and here we read the, the read the we read it into memory, and then we obtain necessary information such as the entry point, the page address of the victim process, because in order to allocate the memory. We need to get this information. Here we allocate the memory in victim process. We write the uh, necessary sections of the rootkit executable into memory. And then after it is written, we can execute it. And then lastly, after the execution is successful, a cleaning up is performed to make sure that no trace is left. Let's try again. Yeah. Now, thing is here in the task, you require to get the flag by executing the hollower. But thing is here, it's asking you to identify a PID of a process that is running. So it's like you are hollowing an existing process. If you go back to the task manager, you can choose a process here and hollow it. Let's choose the same one we chose earlier when we did process injection, 3,836. And you're going to get the same output. Okay, guys. So that was for today's video. Later, we're going to touch on the other subjects. And that was it, guys.